In this video, let's go ahead and create this really cool uh, sci-fi weapon uh, gun that we can then maybe later use uh, with one of our uh, characters, right? So to get started, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the middle section of the weapon. And to do that, I'm just gonna grab a box. I'm gonna hold on the shift key and just drag my uh, box right on my grid. And the reason I have to uh, drag mine is because under uh, create, under polygon uh, primitives, I uh, have interactive creation turned on. So if you don't, when you click on your uh, box, it's just gonna appear on your screen, right? So just a different, um, different way of uh, doing it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this to uh, something like this. So again, this is gonna be uh, sort of the middle of my weapon. And another thing that I would like to do is I'm gonna select all the edges and I'm gonna click on uh, bevel and I'm gonna turn my fraction to something like 0.3 and I'm gonna leave my uh, segments maybe I'm gonna go ahead and set it to two. I am uh, looking to do kind of a low poly uh, weapon, but I think it would be nice if it would if it had some uh, had some roundness to it. Okay. The next thing uh, that we can uh, create are those um, spaces, right? So to do that, um, let's go ahead and grab another box and just drag a box right on the grid and make it kind of skinny sort of like the sizes of those gaps that we want and i'm going to put it in position so something like this uh, should work i'm now going to press Control uh, d and make another one so now i have two of them and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select my first shape and you know before we do the boolean uh, actually let's go ahead and combine these uh, into one. So now we just have uh, this to be like a uh, combined solid uh, mesh. And now if I select my first shape, hold on the shift key and click on my second shape, I can uh, go ahead and do a Boolean, which is uh, this button right here. All right, once you press on it, you should see something uh, similar. If you don't, just make sure that uh, your settings match mine. So in my case, um, I have it set to uh, difference between A and B. If you don't, then you might see some uh, other uh, variations of what's happening on the screen. So just make sure that you choose uh, difference between A and B. And if you wanted to adjust the shape at this point, you could still select the parts that are being subtracted and uh, move them around or position them, you know, to, uh, to where you, you like them to be. And if you're done and you are, are happy with the, with the preview, um, just go ahead and simply clear your history. And that will, uh, let's go ahead and select all of this and clear our history. And that's going to kind of bake in the change um, of the new shape, right? Um, let's go ahead and go to and I want to go into a modeling tab and then go to mesh and do a cleanup. Let's go ahead and click on our options and let me uh, reset these. And I'm gonna do a cleanup and uh, I'm gonna apply fixed by tessellation, tessellation. So I'm gonna say faces with more than four sides and uh, you know, concave faces. And let's go ahead and select all these. Uh, we can even select this as well. And let's just go ahead and do a cleanup. And you can see that um, Maya made sure that you are now left with either a tri or a quad, right? So pretty much mostly a tri. And this is uh, fine for, um, you know, the low poly uh, weapon that I'm doing because normally you want to avoid tries when it comes to um, character animation because this is not going to deform well, obviously, if you uh, had something like this on the character, but because this is a weapon, it's not going to be deformed. Um, so using, you know, then having tries in, um, in the weapon is absolutely fine, right? And it's still, you can see the count, uh, if this was a game, for example, game asset, 
is only 172 uh, try, so it's very low still. So in other words, this is fine for a game uh, uh, asset. All right, so the uh, next section we, that we can work on is kind of extruding the, the front. So let's go ahead and extrude this out. Maybe make something, uh, let's do something like this and then make another extrusion and pull this out. I can now hold, uh, click on this guy, hold on the shift key and double click, and that's gonna select the entire loop. And let's go ahead and do another extrude and pull this out. So maybe it's a little, you know, a little more interesting. We can grab our scale tool and scale this down. Another thing we can do is maybe select, uh, let's go ahead and click on, go to edge mode by, if you right click, you can select uh, edges. And if you click on the top edge, hold on the shift key, you can do the same uh, for the other four or three, right? So I'm just kind of collect, uh, selecting just the corner ones. And uh, now what I would, I would like to do is let's go ahead and do a bevel. Just get rid of those uh, sharp uh, corners, right? All right, very nice. So let's keep going now. Uh, to create the barrel part of the weapon, I'm just gonna simply grab a uh, cylinder and let's go ahead and drag this on our grid, make it the length that we like. Um, I kind of want mine to be sort of short, so maybe something like that should work. Let's go and reduce the, um, subdivision. So I don't want it to be, uh, 20 is a little bit too high for what I'm doing. And, uh, clearly I have to do the subdivision before I change the scale. So I'm going to go for something like mm, maybe 14. And now once that's done, um, actually I do want to get rid of the cap as well. So I can do some work, extrusion work on there. So that's going to be a lot easier. And let's go ahead and expand this to something like that. I'm going to click on uh, my rotation and I'm going to hold down the J key, which you will see um, if you double click on your uh, transform rotation tool you'll see that there is the tool settings that come up and if you hold on the J key that's going to activate your step uh, snap which will allow you to rotate this 90 degrees and kind of snap into position and the way you know it's 90 degrees is because in the bottom left it says 90 uh, degrees right down here okay so I definitely need to make sure that this is centered. So if you hold on the X key, you can snap it on your grid and just make sure that both of these shapes are in the center. So another thing that you want to uh, do if you, if you want to make sure that this is, the pivot is uh, literally in the center of this, um, you can click on this button here, center pivot reset. And now if you hold on the X key, you can again make sure that it snaps right in the center of the grid right and that will allow us to align the barrel uh, kind of with the base uh, the base here so I'm gonna put this in position and maybe bring this up a little bit to something something like this and let's think about this so this is gonna be the connection piece so for um, this to to make sense, I'm actually going to make this a lot smaller and put this in position. Now, um, because this is gonna be a game model, I do wanna make sure that I'm gonna get rid of any faces that are not gonna be seen uh, in the game engine. So in this case, if I click on the X-ray, you can see that this round uh, polygon does not need to be uh, in there, right? So let's get rid of it. So how do we get rid of it without moving this? Well, we can click on this button here to isolate. Then we can right click, go to faces, select it, and then press delete. Let's go ahead and jump out of isolate. 
Now we can go to uh, object mode. We can press Ctrl D and move this down for our second barrel. And uh, I would like these two to be uh, connected. I think that would be uh, interesting. So I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna select one, hold on the shift key and click on the other one and then do a combine by clicking this button here. Next, we can go to face mode and let's go ahead and combine these two shapes together. So I'm gonna select these faces and press delete. Go into the edge mode and just simply select the edges on the bottom and the top, holding down the shift key. And now if we do a um, bridge, um, that's gonna connect both of the shapes together and bridge them together. Okay, so in this case, you see that this these polys turn green and that's because uh, Maya created a new face that didn't yet exist, so it didn't uh, assign the default uh, material to those faces. So to fix it, just go to object mode, select your shape, and go to assign, uh, assign existing material and just click on limber, and that will reassign those uh, very quickly. All right. So let's go ahead and, and uh, keep extruding the rest of the barrel for our weapon. So I'm gonna select uh, this and this. I am going to click on extrude. I'm gonna decide on the thickness of my barrel. So something like this should work. Let's go ahead and um, either press this or do control E, either or. So I'm gonna press this button and just push this out. Again, I want my weapon to be uh, somewhat short, so I think this kind of makes sense. Uh, next, I'm going to press delete key. Go to object mode. And let's do a trick. I'm going to do a control D. And I want to make this kind of uh, interesting. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drag this new one right to the end of it. And let's decide how uh, this is feeling. So. Another thing we can do is obviously close this section off. So now let's go back to the edge mode. Let's double click on this. And let's go ahead and, and do uh, an extrude and just simply push all this in. And I'm gonna uh, not push it or pull it right to the end, but I kind of like this space here. I think it adds uh, kind of an interesting extra detail, right? So to take advantage of that, what we can do is we can uh, click on this and this, and let's do, let's do another extrude and pull this out this way or push. So it's just creating a little extra uh, fun detail. And now while they're both still too selected, we can bridge them together. Go to object mode and let's take a look. So just added kind of a extra little something uh, in there. And for the uh, end of the weapon, let's go ahead and maybe delete. We can either delete these or I mean, let's make them a lot shorter. So I'm gonna uh, double click on this entire loop, hold on the shift key, double click, grab my move tool and just move them to be a lot uh, shorter. So something like this I think is nice. I'm gonna click on extrude and pull this in. And that's gonna be kind of uh, the thickness of my barrel. I'm gonna do another uh, extrude and just pull this all the way in, all the way through to the other side. And if you're not sure uh, where that is, we can again click on the X-ray button and just make sure that it kind of penetrates through the base. So if you look uh, in here, you can just see the end or you could see that it's solid, right? So I think that looks pretty cool. Let's um, maybe add on the very top, the part of the weapon that, um, I'm not sure what it's called, you know, the, the aimer, right? You, you aim. So I'm gonna select both of these faces. I'm gonna click on uh, extrude again and just pull these in something like that. 
I can press the R key, which is a shortcut for scale, and maybe shape this a little better. So I have something like this. And I kind of, I do like that it's creating this interesting uh, detail, kind of a happy accident that looks uh, like this. We can, you know, play around with the shape and maybe uh, flatten it. See what that feels like. We can grab our move tool and move this up. So we have something like this. Another thing we can do is extrude. And let's go ahead and extrude this a little more. Press R. Maybe bring this in and press extrude again and pull this up. Something like that. I'm gonna press R and bring these together. And maybe even bring these together. Just so it's a little more uh, dynamic looking. So I think this looks nice. If you wanted to play with the size of this, we can go to vert mode, um, we can press W and just move this up or down. So just figure out what you think looks looks nice. At any point, you can still increase the thickness of this, right? By just simply going to the edges. And for example, you can click on both of these edges. And if you wanted to make it thicker, for example, you can press R and just kind of widen this up a little. So it's, maybe it's a little more, um, kind of a stronger shape, right? Another thing we can do is let's go ahead and go to edge mode and let's double click on this, hold on the shift key, double click on this and still holding down the shift key, I'm gonna select uh, the bottom one as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a bevel and I think that's gonna kind of soften this up a little bit and make it look, feel a little more um, organic, right? And uh, if we wanted to, we can go to object mode and do the same thing with this as well. Let's go ahead and go to edge mode, double click on this, holding on the shift key. I'm just gonna go all the way around and make sure that it's selected everywhere. And now to repeat the bevel, I can just press G on my keyboard and that's going to bevel that as well. I'm kind of uh, liking how it's looking. It's kind of a fun stylized uh, feel to the weapon. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, next, we should, let's go ahead and uh, kind of build the back. And for the back, uh, I'm gonna take all of these, press W and maybe move them a little in a little more. All right, so, so uh, for the back, let's maybe, uh, let's grab another box just maybe create another box and I'm gonna hold on the X key and just snap it to the center as well and I don't uh, again I don't need this face here so I'm gonna select I'm gonna jump out of the symmetrical mode click on this here and press delete and let's go ahead and pull this in so uh, now we can use this to maybe uh, start building kind of the back with the handle and the trigger part of the weapon. So uh, one of the things we can do is let's figure out, let's um, hold down control and D and pull this up. So now we have another uh, part here. I can go to the edge mode, for example, and maybe do something like this. I can press extrude and maybe pull this out. Grab this, press W and just move this down. Let's grab this box and let's kind of create the, uh, the very back of the weapon, right? So I'm gonna click on this here click on extrude. If I click on any one of these uh, boxes here, you can see that a middle one appears, which is the blue one. Now I can scale this in, something like that. I can press Control E again and pull this out even more. So I'm just creating kind of an interesting detail back there. 
go to edge mode and let's go ahead and figure out what we want to do here we can uh, select this bottom one press w and maybe move this up and maybe this could be kind of uh, the handle coming out so i'm going to press extrude and just pull this uh, down something like that very cool Another thing we can do is let's go ahead and select uh, these edges down here and do a bevel. Maybe we can grab these verts and maybe make this a little wider so it feels a little, again, a little more dynamic, a little more interesting. Uh, to add some uh, movement here, for example, if we want to bend this, you can see that right now it's just one big solid shape. And what we can do is we can press spacebar and uh, press A to zoom out and then press spacebar again to move into the side view, right? All right, so the next thing I can do is I can select my uh, handle. Let's go ahead and grab the knife tool. Let's just make a few cuts uh, that will allow us to maybe bend the weapon. So something, something along these lines should work. I can now go to verts mode and maybe just rotate the handle in uh, sections, right? So I can press E to make a rotation, press W to move this around so you can find a position that uh, kind of makes sense. All right, so I kind of, uh, I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and jump back into the perspective view and take a look. So one of the things I see right away is obviously these uh, corners are way too sharp. So let's just select the entire thing. Just select the whole entire thing and just do a um, bevel on every single edge. And let's change the fraction and I think I'm pretty happy with the result. I can see that it kind of gave us an extra loop and you can change the the fraction to see what makes good and make sure that some of the shapes don't like I'm looking right here right I don't want to go past this line here because that begins to kind of rip and break so in my case I just need to make sure that it kind of goes right up to this line and it just kind of needs to look good from different uh, angles, right? So I kind of like this. I'm going to go with this. Uh, I think that looks good. And maybe let's go ahead and create the part of the weapon that would be a, um, a trigger, right? So I'm going to grab this box here and do an extrusion. Let's pull this out and maybe pull this in a little. And what I would like to do is I would like to connect it with the, uh, with the top part. So to do this, I'm going to uh, select this face here and do an extrusion. I'm gonna click on the, on the end here and grab the blue box and just kind of pull this in. Then press W to kind of shift it um, over a little bit and then do control E and just pull this down. So something like that. Now I can press delete key and let's go ahead and, and connect this shape with uh, kind of this one here. So I'm gonna press W and just adjust this and put it into a better position, kind of prepared for the connection. So something like that. And let's go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm going to click on this, do a extrude and pull this in just like before, kind of sh uh, put this in position. I can grab the red axes here and just pull this in. 
something like that. I'm gonna press uh, delete key. And now if you go to the edge mode, you should be able to just double click on this. Hold on the shift key, double click on this. And let's do a bridge and kind of connect uh, all of this together. So we have this really funky uh, shape. And I think let's go ahead and make this into a part of the weapon that will be a trigger. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this box here and this box here and do Control E again. Do something like this, press Delete. Now, if I double click on this, hold on the shift key and double click on uh, that side, I can do a bridge and that's gonna connect them all together. So now we're left with something that looks uh, kind of interesting, right? And now uh, to pull out the trigger, let's figure out where that should be. Maybe from, it should be coming from the top. So again, control E, Click on the box, scale this in. Maybe maybe make it a little skinnier. Just keep playing with it until uh, it makes kind of sense. So I think this this looks uh, pretty good. Now I'm going to uh, press Control E again and just pull this arrow down. And let's go ahead and kind of go halfway. Do control E again, pull this down and then press uh, control E and just rotate this, press W. And now if we double click on these edges, we can kind of shape it into what a trigger might look like or something that uh, kind of makes sense. Maybe it would be easier to press W uh, and I mean spacebar and go into a side view and now just kind of sculpting of what a trigger shape would be. Maybe something along these lines uh, makes sense. Just a matter of preference. So I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, pressing down the spacebar, I can jump back into my perspective view and take a look. So I like this, but in my uh, case, it feels like it's a little too thick. So I'm just gonna grab uh, these edges here. And maybe these as well. And let's go ahead and also grab the front ones. And I just simply want to scale the width of this. So something like that. feels a little better to me. Very cool. Uh, this part here feels kind of uh, under build. So let's go ahead and add some something interesting. Maybe let's grab both of these sides. Do control E. I mean, I'm sorry, control. Um, yeah, control E. And let's go ahead and give us something like this, maybe shimmy these over. I'm going to do control E again and using the arrow key, I can kind of pull this in, click on the edge on the end one and then pull these in. So you have something like this. I'm going to do control E again and maybe do something like this. And let's go ahead and do control E again and pull this out. So I'm just trying to create some kind of a extra detail that is uh, created with geometry. And then when you add textures and substance painter, uh, this will look uh, even interesting. And then keep in mind, uh, if you keep a look at the uh, heads up display here, it's it's uh, super low poly, right? So this entire weapon so far is only 1366 uh, tries. So this is definitely very, very low poly, uh, which is uh, which, which is really cool. 
And at this point, uh, it's just fun to come up with things that, um, you know, you can do to make it maybe look a little more custom or a little more interesting. For example, I can grab this uh, bottom here and, you know, maybe pull something out. So do something, just try to have fun and uh, just experiment. So maybe let's pull this part down. It's a little more. So it's not just a, you know, a bottom flat, right? So it has some kind of a detail that maybe makes uh, sense. I'm gonna go into the side view and this feels a little too boxy to me. So I can grab maybe these guys here, press R and just maybe bring them in a little. So I think that's interesting. Uh, another thing we can do is maybe uh, it would be cool if maybe this part of the weapon had kind of a kind of a hole going through. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm just gonna scale this section in. So something like that. Move this over. Press delete. and then select edges on both sides and just do a bridge. And you can see how uh, quickly it just creates something, something very interesting, right? And one thing that you do wanna stay away from is anything looking too boxy. So if you can create some dynamic um, motion or movement of shapes, uh, it, it will feel a lot better, right? So like just doing something like this feels a little more uh, I don't know what the word is, aerodynamic. You know, I'm realizing if this was uh, an actual weapon, it probably wouldn't make much sense for uh, this thing here, right? It doesn't really do much of anything. So maybe I can make, make it a little larger. It feels like it's too small but I guess it doesn't need to make sense. It's just a toy or a, a game model. So this uh, this is pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and connect maybe this section here. This feels definitely like it needs to be connected with the top part. So I'm gonna maybe make this a little skinnier and just, you could see I keep doing the same thing and we can even bring this up a little. do this one more time and then extrude this all the way up and in and then press delete key if you want to delete that top face so now uh, maybe this feels a little uh, more connected I kind of like that I can uh, go into isolation mode and if we wanted to we can maybe select this piece here and just just shape it a little uh, a little bit again just feels a little more interesting I'm gonna grab this here and maybe move this up and if uh, you wanted to you know uh, we can also of course Let's go ahead and turn our grid back on. We can also, also uh, grab a box and just create a box and do something like a mesh uh, smooth and maybe subdivision or divided by uh, like one. And why didn't that work? I don't know. Let's go and take a look. So right now the division levels are two, right? I need it to be one, because I, I want to maintain that low poly. And uh, for example, if I want to turn this into like a, almost like a bolt, I can just delete all of these. 
and maybe scale this down. Another thing I could do is maybe grab uh, these faces here to control uh, E. Let's maybe do something like this. Press control uh, E again and just pull this in. So it almost looks like a, I don't know, like a screw, right? Uh, I can select this and center my pivot, then go to uh, move. And let's go ahead and just move this right into position. Um, I think somewhere right here would, might look really cool. I'm gonna press F to uh, frame in to my uh, piece here that I'm doing. I'm gonna scale this down, but I kind of do like it sort of uh, large looking. So, I think that, that looks really uh, cool. If we want this to be a little more random, maybe we can rotate this so it looks something like that. We can also uh, use these on other parts of the weapon. I'm gonna press Control D, grab my transform tool, maybe let's go ahead and add one here. Press R, maybe make it a little smaller. Press F to zoom in, uh, press W. Kind of make sure it goes into position. Press space bar and go into a side view. And let's go ahead and make maybe a few of these. So I have one here, press control D, move this down, press control D again, bring this down and maybe put one here as well. And of course uh, now you can rotate them. So maybe they look like, you know, like they're pointing in different directions. I think that's kind of cool. So something like that. And another thing we can do is obviously copy this on the other uh, on the other side of the weapon. So let's go ahead and select these. I'm going to turn off my grid. I'm going to select uh, these holding down the shift key. I'm just selecting all five of them and I'm going to combine them. And now let's go ahead and do a uh, mesh mirror. Let's go to options. Is it Z? Let's do apply. Yeah, it's Z, okay. So pressing Z, you can see it puts it uh, on the other side uh, really nicely. So now we have these on both sides. You can click on this button here to add a uh, screen space ambient occlusion. You can see it adds a little uh, shadow. So maybe it looks a little bit nicer. And you can control these by going to render viewport and under, um, let's see, under uh, screen space ambient occlusion, you can pump up the amount. So maybe we can make it a little darker. We can also change the radius. And this is gonna give you a, a nice preview of what, you know, maybe a baked version in Substance Painter would look like. So maybe this is a little bit too much, but something like that. You can see right away, it's, it's a lot more interesting and it has more depth in the weapon. All right, so I kind of like this. I don't think we need to take it further, but if you wanted to, you can add more uh, detail and make it more uh, custom. One thing we could do is maybe, let's go ahead and click on this face. Hold on now, shift key. I can, uh, so I'm holding down the shift, I'm clicking, then double clicking to select the entire loop. And let's go ahead and do the same thing here. And now if I press control E, I can maybe um, find the blue arrow and just kind of pull these in. And in Substance Painter, that would be pretty cool if these were uh, emissive. So if that part of the weapon was glowing, I think that would be really nice. But again, it quickly adds a very interesting detail. And again, I'm really very mindful about my try. So I'm only at, you know, Let's round this up 2200, uh, which is which is really good. I think uh, it would be a lot of fun at this point to just go ahead and uh, unwrap this and um, bring it into Substance Painter. 
So uh, maybe we could do that in our next video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope maybe you learned a couple uh, tricks and um, hopefully you ended up with a cool uh, weapon uh, that is uh, that you like and I'll see you in our next video.